Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Question for you. Do you know what an agate is? And if you were to see a photo of an agate, would you be able to identify it? Would you be able to identify all agates? What about jaspers? Do you know what an agate really is? Or what a jasper really is? I think a lot of people out there, if you're watching this video, maybe you said yes to those. Maybe you think it's a, a clean cut, clear topic. And I'm kind of here to tell you that you're wrong. It's not. Uh, a lot of it is very subjective. It's up to the person looking at something. And we're going to try to unmuddy the water a little bit. You know, there's a lot of common names that people have for this stuff. And uh, I have behind me right here on the table a pretty good selection of different uh, agates and jasper and things that are a mix of the two and really going to try to unmuddy the waters because I see a lot of incorrect things. I see a lot of people being like, actually, um, put all of that aside. Let's look at what we have here. And if you stay tuned for the whole video, if you learn something, I would love it if you would hit the subscribe button. It means a lot to me as I try to grow this channel and get the word out there about some of these different topics. So let's look at this. Well, what do you think of this display of rocks? Is everything here jasper? Is everything here an agate? What if I told you there were a couple of things in here that were neither one of those? What do you think? Are you able to easily pick those out? And uh, are you sure about your uh, assessment? We're going to get really into this. We're, I'll show you what we have here. But first off, let's lay some ground rules, because we got to kind of talk about what all of this stuff is. You have rocks, which are made up of minerals. Minerals are made up of elements, okay? That's everything. All rocks that you would ever see. Um, it's going to land in those ca three categories. Within that, when we start to talk about agates and jasper they're all microcrystalline quartz or microcrystalline quartzite that's what they all are the micro part refers to not being able to see the crystalline structure so the difference is can you see the crystals okay do you see the crystals no you don't because you would need a microscope to see these crystals. Can you see the crystals? Absolutely, you can see the crystals. This being just quartz. There we go. That's the difference. However, how about something that would trick you up? What about this? Can you see the crystals? You kind of can. What would you call this? Is this microcrystalline quartz or quartz? I hope you understand what I'm doing here, which is I'm trying to lay a little bit of groundwork that some of this stuff is in the eye of the person looking at it. And it's probably not a good practice to spend your free time trying to correct people, okay? There's a lot of that in the rock hounding world. A lot of that nonsense exists on Facebook and in comment sections. And typically, uh, the ones that I see, everybody's wrong. So let's try to write that ship. So we know what rocks are made out of. We know a little bit about microcrystalline versus crystal. All agates and jasper are going to be microcrystalline for the most part. We're going to get into that for the most part. It's hard to also talk about translucency. Tra what's, what's translucent? What's transparent? What is opaque? So, but we kind of have to get into that subject a little bit. And that's another thing where what I think might be opaque and what somebody else might think is opaque. And then are two different things. And then also we have the issue of 
things that kind of straddle the line between tra semi-transparent and opaque. Like, what if it's half the rock? You know, it, it gets, the waters get muddy. <laughs> the waters, the waters get muddy. Well, for the most part, <clears throat> all of these things are silica, right? So your, uh, your quartz crystals, your microcrystalline quartz, um, it's all silica. Now, the way agates typically form is you're going to have a crack, a void, an air bubble in like an igneous rock. Water that has a lot of dissolved silica in it washes into that, washes out, washes in, washes out. As it does that, you get small deposition of silica in that void. And over hundreds of thousands of years, we actually don't know how long it takes for that silica goo to fully solidify. Uh, but when you, when, have, when you have that and you have different minerals present within that silica rich water, you get things like this, right? You get that that classic banded agate appearance, right? You can get agates that kind of look, look like this. We have that banding running through there. It's kind of weird. That's basically what all agates come down to. Silica rich waters getting into an open space and solidifying. Typically, your agates will be found in igneous rocks, but you can also, they've been found in sedimentary rocks, um, but it's more common in areas with that volcanic activity that would have produced igneous rocks, like we have here. What this is, is a piece of basalt, and what we have here is an agate that formed Sorry about that. What we have here is an agate that formed in an air bubble in basalt. How cool is that? It's an agate in its natural state. Of course, you start to have erosive features in things. And, uh, you know, agates going into creeks and stuff like that. They get tumbled up. It gets more and more difficult. Um, here's a good example of an agate that formed in a crack, a seam, a seam agate. And you can see that different deposition of silica rich waters that had different colors of minerals in there. And you can actually see the impression of the rock that this formed be between on both sides. Jasper, on the other hand, are generally going to be more opaque, right? So here we have a piece of jasper, and uh, here we have a piece of chalcedony, which doesn't have much uh, extra mineral to it. It's really just a very pure microcrystalline quartz. I mean, you can see there's a little bit of color, there's a little bit of uh, iron in here, most likely getting that orangish color, but you can see the difference between something that is, is totally opaque and something that you could be start to get into that translucent, transparent look. Your jaspers, like that, and that, and that. And uh, we'll talk about this guy here. How about the, these two, right? Look at this jasper. What do you think formed this? How do you think jasper came to be? Typically... It's going to be particulate, like, you know, little eroded things that are now cemented together by silica. And that's why you get these different colors and stuff to it. Now, this isn't an identification video. We have one of those. I'll link it right up there. Now, what's your assessment of this? What would you call this rock? Is this an agate or is it jasper i've heard people call these things jasp agates i've heard people call things like this claspers 
<laughs> I've heard all kinds of things, okay? With a rock like this, I would say the answer is somewhere in the middle. You could call this an agate. You could call it jasper. You could call it jasp agate. You could call it uh, microcrystalline uh, quartz. You could call it silica. I mean, you could call it kind of whatever. So there's not really a right or wrong answer with this because there's portions of it that are uh, very kind of clear and banded and uh, light could shine through it. And then there's parts that, that would not, would not be able to. <clears throat> you can also have some very clear agates. You can have agates that have different features. That has uh, betroidal features on the inside and slight pluming around the edges. Very complex. Where, you know, it's, it's a big, big world out there, right? Do you see anything here that wouldn't fall into that category? We kind of have an idea now of what agates generally look like. You know, they can be all kinds of things. And people will use uh, the common words freely, and I don't think they should really be corrected. I'm not one to uh, get hung up on language. But how about this? What do you think? This would typically be called carnelian. Uh, it can come in a number of hues, but essentially carnelian is a microcrystalline quartz, silica with iron that gets this beautiful orangish red appearance to it. Some people would call this an agate. Some people would try to correct that person and say it's carnelian, but does that matter? I say it doesn't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't freaking matter to me. Um, <clears throat> okay. A lot of people would call this here a piece of picture jasper. This was sent to me. Some of you may have been eyeballing this guy back here. What do you think of this picture jasper? Psych! Not picture jasper. This is a piece of rhyolite. But... <laughs> Could these two be cousins? I don't know. You tell me. They're not, but, uh, you know, I think that's interesting to see that type of similarity and stuff and how confusing this can get. Moving right along. What about this guy? Can you see the crystals? Can you see a crystalline structure in there? So is it an agate? Is it microcrystalline? We have clear silicas have deposited and then, you know, this, this outside and then crystals formed on the inside. <clears throat> so is this transparent, translucent, or is this opaque? Here's that same material, right? You can see little dendrites in there. Sorry about that. I'm not gonna take up too much more of your time, but I'm just trying to illustrate some of these things and kind of prove a point, right? That <clears throat> agates and jasper Quartz, microcrystalline, silica, all of this stuff, it's not its not as cut, cut and dry. It's not as clear all the time. What about this? What do you think about this? Agate? If we know that agate has to be, or is supposed to be, microcrystalline, which means you can't see the crystals... What would you call this? We have here clear crystal structure. We also have some portions that don't have crystal structure. You can see the void in which this formed. It reminds me a little bit of the whole thunder egg and geode thing, right? Like a, a thunder egg can be a geode, but a geode can't be a thunder egg. Is that how that goes? 
a thunder egg can be a geode, but a geode can't be a thunder egg. Um, essentially, uh, that's in reference to the void. We're getting all a little in the weeds here, I know. Grab one more thing up here. Thunder egg, geode, a thunder egg that could be geoded. Solid, not solid, partially solid. You can also have agatized things. So we have a piece of agatized wood here. Piece that I collected. What about this? Is this an agate? It's not transparent. It's not translucent. It's clearly banded. It's definitely silica. Maybe in a future video we'll get into what form did some of these different types of agates and how it's possible for, for these things to come into existence. But for right now, I just kind of wanted to do a little show and tell. We're laying the groundwork for future videos, future conversations here on the channel. I appreciate you stopping by, looking at some rocks. I hope uh, I managed to clear up some of these things for you and uh, kind of really showcase some of what agates are and jasper. These, these different rocks and minerals are, well, it's not always uh, a perfect textbook example. But uh, thanks for coming by. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like. I appreciate you. Catch you on the next video, everybody. Take care.